This is Med School Radio. Welcome back to Med School Radio. This is Simon in New York City, right in front of the United Nations. Post-translational modification of proteins is important for targeting proteins to the correct location. This step is defective in eye cell disease, which is characterized by a lack of mannose residue phosphorylation, resulting in inappropriate trafficking of acid hydrolases to the extracellular space instead of to lysosomes. Contraction initiation in cardiac and smooth muscle cells is dependent on extracellular calcium influx through L-type calcium channels, which can be prevented by calcium channel blockers, for example, parapamil. Skeletal muscle is resistant to calcium channel blockers as calcium released by the sarcoplasmic reticulum is triggered by a mechanical interaction between L-type and RYR calcium channels. After a ligand binds to a G protein coupled receptor that activates phospholipase C, membrane phospholipids are broken down into diacylglycerol, which is DAG, and inositol triphosphate, or IP3. Protein kinase C is subsequently activated by DAG and calcium. The latter is released from the endoplasmic reticulum under the influence of IP3. DNA binding proteins include transcription factors, MYC, CREB, steroid receptors, cortisol, aldosterone, progesterone, thyroid hormone receptor, fat soluble vitamin receptors, vitamin D, retinoic acid, and DNA transcription and replication proteins. Mitochondrial DNA or mtDNA is the most common non-nuclear DNA found in eukaryotic cells. It resembles prokaryotic DNA and is maternally derived. Mutations involving mtDNA or nuclear DNA that codes for mitochondrial proteins can cause a variety of mitochondrial disorders, including Lay syndrome and MELAS. Synchronization of glycogen degradation with skeletal muscle contraction occurs due to release of sarcoplasmic calcium following neuromuscular stimulation. Increased intracellular calcium causes activation of phosphorylase kinase stimulating glycogen phosphorylase to increase glycogenolysis. Aldolase B deficiency causes hereditary fructose intolerance. This disease manifests after introduction of fructose into the diet with vomiting and hypoglycemia about 20 to 30 minutes after fructose injection ingestion. These infants can present with failure to thrive, jaundice, and hepatomegaly. Insulin release by pancreatic beta cells is stimulated by increased glucose metabolism and ATP production. Glucokinase functions as a glucose sensor in pancreatic beta cells by controlling the rate of glucose entry into the glycolytic pathway. Mutations in the glucokinase gene lead to a state in which higher glucose levels are required to stimulate insulin secretion and are a cause of maturity onset diabetes of the young. Familial dysbetylproteinemia. Familial dysbetylproteinemia which is type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia, is an autosomal recessive disorder characterized by elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels. 
It is caused by defects in ApoE3 and ApoE4, leading to decreased clearance of chylomicrons and VLDL remnants. Patients can develop eruptive and palmar xanthomas and premature atherosclerosis. Alcaptonuria is an autosomal recessive disorder in which the lack of homogenistic acid dioxygenase blocks the metabolism of tyrosine, leading to an accumulation of homogenistic acid. Clinical features include black urine color when exposed to air, a blue-black pigmentation on the face, and ochronotic arthropathy. Phosphofructokinase 1, or PFK1, catalyzes the rate-limiting step in glycolysis, and the most potent stimulator of PFK1 is fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Insulin increases production of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by phosphofructokinase 2, which is PFK2, thereby stimulating glycolysis. In Neiman Pick disease, sphingomyelinase deficiency causes accumulation of the lipid sphingomyelin. Clinical features include hepatosplenomegaly, neurologic regression, and a cherry red macular spot in infancy. Insulin is an anabolic hormone that acts via receptor tyrosine kinase signaling to increase the synthesis of glycogen, proteins, fatty acids, and nucleic acids. Tyrosine kinase slash phosphodidyl-linocytyl-3 kinase stimulation promotes glycogen synthesis by activating protein phosphatase, an enzyme that dephosphorylates or activates glycogen synthase. When glycogen stores are depleted during fasting, ketone bodies are produced in the liver and can be used as an energy source in the mitochondria of peripheral tissues. The brain preferentially uses glucose, but will utilize ketones for most of its energy needs during prolonged starvation. Erythrocytes lack mitochondria and are unable to use ketones. Maple syrup urine disease classically presents with irritability, dystonia, poor feeding, and a maple syrup scent to the patient's urine within the first few days of life. Dietary restriction of branched chain amino acids, for example, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, is the hallmark of treatment. Glycerol produced by the Degradation of triglycerides in adipose tissue can be used by glycerol kinase in the liver and kidney to synthesize glucose during gluconeogenesis. Volume contraction and expansion can be divided into isomotic, hyposmotic, hyperosmotic states. Hyperosmotic volume contraction is caused by a loss of free water with retention of electrolytes. It can occur in patients with diabetes insipidus or as a result of decreased fluid intake slash excessive sweating. Glucose transport protein or GLUT, GLUT4, is an insulin-sensitive glucose transporter expressed in skeletal muscle cells and adipocytes that translocates to the plasma membrane in response to increasing insulin levels. In contrast, GLUT1, 2, 3, and 5 are always present on the plasma membrane and constitutively transport glucose in an insulin independent manner.
Protein kinase A is responsible for the intracellular effects of G-protein-mediated adenylate cyclase second messenger system. Hormone receptors that use this system include the TSH, glucagon, and PTH receptors. In hyperglycemic states, aldose reductase converts glucose to sorbitol at a rate faster than sorbitol can be metabolized. Sorbitol accumulates in certain cells, such as Lenn cells, causing an influx of water and resulting in osmotic cellular injury. Depletion of NADPH by aldose reductase also increases oxidative stress which accelerates development of cataracts and diabetic microvascular complications, for example, neuropathy and retinopathy. Growth hormone binds to cell surface receptors, leading to intracellular activation of the JAK-STAT pathway. Cytokines, for example, interferon, and hematopoietic growth factors, e.g. erythropoietin, or GCSF also use this pathway. Branch chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase requires several coenzymes, thiamine, lipoid, coenzyme A, FAD, NAD. So the mnemonic here is tender loving care for Nancy. Some patients with maple syrup urine disease improve with high-dose thiamine treatment, but most require lifelong restriction of leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, or F2,6-BP, activates phosphofructokinase 1, increasing glycolysis, and inhibits fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, decreasing gluconeogenesis. F2,6-BP concentration is regulated by a bifunctional enzyme complex. Phosphofructokinase 2 increases F2,6-BP levels in response to insulin, and fructose 2,6-bisphosphatase decreases F2,6-BP levels in response to glucagon. In the polyol pathway, aldose reductase converts glucose into sorbitol, which is slowly metabolized into fructose by sorbitol dehydrogenase. Chronic hyperglycemia overwhelms this pathway, causing intracellular sorbitol accumulation and increased osmotic oxidative stress. This accelerates cataract development in patients with diabetes and contributes to the pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy, neuropathy, and nephropathy. Stress hyperglycemia is transiently elevated blood glucose levels in the context of severe illness, for example, sepsis, burns, major hemorrhage in patients without pre-existing diabetes mellitus. Cortisol and catecholamines, released in response to severe metabolic stress, act on the liver to increase glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. The initial step in the synthesis of steroid hormones is the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone in the mitochondria. The remainder of steroidogenesis occurs in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Steroid-producing cells contain a well-developed smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Hormone-sensitive lipase is found in adipose tissue, where it functions to drive the breakdown of stored triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. During times of starvation, this enzyme provides substrates for hepatic gluconeogenesis and ketone body formation. Tay-Sachs disease is an autosomal recessive disorder caused by beta-hexosaminidase A deficiency, which results in GM2 ganglioside accumulation in neuronal lysosomes. Q 
key clinical features include progressive neurodegeneration, for example, developmental regression, an exaggerated startle reflex, and a cherry red macular spot. Alanine is the major amino acid responsible for transferring nitrogen to the liver for disposal. During the catabolism of proteins, amino groups are transferred to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. Glutamate is then processed in the liver to form urea, the primary disposal form of nitrogen in humans. Free ammonia is also excreted into the urine by the kidney for regulation of amino acid base status. So thanks very much for joining me for this session of the main educational objective review.